Well, if it seems like the number of cases involving inappropriate relations between a female teacher and a male student have risen, it's because it has. In our state alone, the number of cases in the last five years can litter nearly every county in our state. And a study in the Journal of Childhood Sexual Abuse shows 112 cases in the southeastern states from 2007 to 2011. Let's talk about it. Joining us this morning is our licensed therapist and Fox 6 News contributor, Dr. Misty Smith. And joining us by phone, Dr. Timothy Stone. He is the state mental health director. He is joining us by phone from Montgomery. Dr. Stone, let me, uh, let me start with you. I understand uh, from this study that you help us uh, find, uh, you found an interesting difference in the age groups that fell victim to educators in terms of the different uh, genders. Talk about that. Yeah, Mike. Uh, actually, in this study, it covered uh, southeastern states, and there were a total of uh, well over 400 arrests for sexual misconduct. 112 of those involved female teachers. The difference in the uh, the sexes uh, was interesting in that uh, females tended to abuse high school age students, whereas males mm -hmm. tended to uh, to abuse elementary school children. Hmm. And Dr. Smith, I spoke with several school systems yesterday. Uh, many of them have a different training, professional training for their young teachers when they first get started to avoid this kind of behavior. For some reason, it's not working though. Why not? Well, you have to look at the personalities of teachers, and a lot of teachers are young. They are in their early 20s, and, you know, the new adolescent age doesn't stop until 25, so many of them just feel like they are young. And you look at a 15 to 18-year-old male, mm -hmm. and they, they kind of forget that they are older. They forget that they're the professional, and they start idealizing on certain aspects of the students. So they really, the boundaries that were, are supposed to be there, they're crossing them, right? So Dr. Stone, do you, how much of a role do you think social media plays here as well? I think that it plays a pretty big role. I think that it probably has desensitized uh, people to certain boundaries violations that uh, we may have been more aware of in the past and it certainly has played a role though and possibly an increase in the reporting mm. of abuse because we have found in this study that uh, the reports of female teacher abuse on male students tends to be reported by <laughs> friends and by by uh, by friends and cohorts of the students rather than by the student themselves Dr. Smith, uh, so what, what can parents do? Well, parents need to be aware of many different things that teachers are doing that might imply that they are grooming a student. Um, they need to look at with, if the teacher's wanting friendships and outings with your, with your child, um, if they're giving gifts that seem inappropriate or odd to you. Um, if they're trying too hard to get close to you as the parent, mm -hmm. they are forgetting their boundaries. Um, I recently had someone in who said, you know, I had a teacher that texted my student or my child and I, I just think that's really inappropriate. Make sure that they're not complimenting them too much, you know, complimenting them on that specific shirt mm -hmm. or that specific pair of pants. Right. Um, and if they're getting too open with their boundaries and touching, mm -hmm. they're hugging them too much, you know, caressing their back, they're, that's a process called grooming. Dr. Stone, um, you know, I, I, you may have heard me mention, mm -hmm. I talked to several school systems, they each have different methods in terms of professional training to prevent this sort of stuff, but should schools be doing more now? Should we upgrade and improve the training? Well, first of all, the schools have to be doing the basics. Uh, they need to make sure that they have policies and procedures in place to define and to recognize sexual misconduct and that they're following those policies and procedures. But then uh, there has to be reporting and there has to be ongoing training. It's not something that you just do once. People have to be kept up to date and they have to continue to be aware of these issues and what to recognize and how to deal with the problem. And really, it, it, it falls on the responsibility, falls on the teacher, does it not? Because the, the, the teenager is still just the teenager, right? Right, the teenager is, and uh, teachers just need to remember their boundaries. And I think that Dr. Stone is right in that it needs to be constant, ongoing um, training for teachers because I think they do it towards the beginning and they mm -hmm. require only so much, and maybe they're not choosing to take on that that 
certification type information and they're choosing other outlets and I think this is one they need to be required to do. And the future ramifications, we can spend a whole other segment on that in the future about what it would do to the victims. Dr. Stone, Dr. Smith, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank and we you. would love to hear what uh, you think. You can friend me on Facebook or like our Good Day Alabama Facebook page or also follow me on Twitter, Mike Deverly, GDA.